Hey there, welcome back to chapter 2 with my mini PCG series. Today we are going to have some fun creating a river that winds through the forest without messing up any of the trees and plots and any foliage that come with the landscape. I also show you how to tweak our PCG graph so it clears out any obstacles letting the river uh, flow smoothly across the landscape. And I'm super excited to share these tips with you today, and so let's dive in and get started. In this lesson we'll be focusing on adding water plugin as well as make it work and interact with the PCG volume here. So and then uh, to try to work it out in such a way that it will make the water flow as well as removes any obstacles that comes with that. So that's what we're going to work on. And second of all, which I think will be our first priority is to create an actor blueprint and uh, assign this as a component. And what we'll do with this blueprint, we're actually going to use it to control the amount of trees as well as the amount of rocks and grass and so on and uh, so they make it more uh, accessible but also more refined ways of creating a tool uh, for uh, creating much more optimized environments so without further ado let's get started so let me go first to our pcg forest that we created last time and make sure what we do is to also identify what exactly each part of these um, input nodes do inside our surface sampler. So in this case, because we use point extents, this is what it dictates about a number of trees, in this case trees, uh, that are going to be spawned and not uh, cl either closer or further away from each other. So if I just play it around and see what happens, so as you might see, my number of trees are getting closer, right? On the X, Y, and X and Y values which is a good indicator because this, those are the values we're going to use for this one. So now we're going to focus on these two. So let me just uh, open this up bigger. So let me first things uh, leave it as it is uh, because what we need to make sure you have enough space to plug those uh, values in, uh, especially parameters that we're going to create. Uh, and the main part of interest, which I'm actually going to use for this one, it's going to be point extent. So let me go and go to graphics settings. And what's so good about uh, the latest version of Unreal 5.4.2 uh, uh, that you can actually uh, start adding uh, parameters under instance uh, tab, which means you don't need to create parameters uh, that like used to be before in the actual blueprint. You can actually do this within this one, but you still we need to start, uh, still uh, make sure we add some extra variables inside the um, actual blueprint. But anyway, with this one set, let's go start it. So let's start adding it. So in this case, because we're gonna use vector, so I'm gonna click on that vector and also rename it to trees. So let's for now test this one out. So let me right click and look for trees. So we now we have get trees parameter, but before I do anything, I wanna make sure first I set these values to 300 because if you don't set these to uh, 300 or you don't set to any value bigger than 100, what's going to happen? Your uh, PCG might crash while you're trying to uh, make it interactive in real time with the trees here. So let's go back to our content browser and right click next to the PCG forest and I'm going to call uh, an actor. So in this case, I'm going to call BP uh, underscore, I guess, a forest. Okay. So double click on this one. And with this one sorted, we let's add our uh, PCG components. In this case, I'm going to PCG component. I compile this and let me start adding these uh, values here as well. So the ones we ha actually have already here, we have to also declare it inside a blueprint, which is here uh, as well. So in this case, one we need to make sure what exactly this instance parameter is, is the it's a vector. And the way you can also find out is if you go to a, let's say surface sampler. And when you look at this point extent, if you highlight in any of these, uh, parameters inputs that you what you will see it will always uh, explain to you like a little helper and explain what exactly this tab is for this one and it says it's a f vector which means it's basically a vector xyz so that's good indication that's because that's what we need so in this case what i'll do i'm gonna plug this for now so i'm gonna plug a point extent and minimize this bring it back in and i'm going back to my bp forest and for this one let me rename this to trees as well because the naming has to be exactly the same as this one because otherwise it won't work. Uh, another thing I'm gonna set to vector, make this visible so we can have this visible in our graph. 
and also what I'm gonna do is to go to construction script because we're using construction script to interact it uh, in real time especially in the editor I'm gonna bring those in here uh, the parameters as I said to get trees and next thing what I'll do I'll bring the power PC component and what I'm gonna do is get a graph instance uh, because this is the only way you can access the parameters that comes with uh, um, with from PCG component and so that also helps us to access some of this uh, parameters that we've just created in this case uh, it would call it trees here right but in this case what we need to also make sure is we have to set first the vector this parameter and then we're gonna actually use this trees that we have here and call it here too so I call it exactly the same thing trees and because we already have a trace here, also make sure you compile and also change those values right here too. So make sure you set it to 300, just like it was done in the previous uh, graph editor. I'm going to connect all these and then compile it. So now, if you go look it up here, so if I click on, if I go remove this guy and I bring my forest. Okay, so I forgot something. So let's go back BP forest. And my bad because I need to also uh, assign this instance right here. So the the forest we have from here, I can just bring it clo uh, to my uh, graph uh, place order right there. So I'm just gonna literally make it bigger. So I'm gonna compile that. So now I can just make it bigger, just like that. Now, as you can see, we have a little blueprint there. We go a little bigger now. So the, the, as long as you literally uh, scale it from the X and Y uh, positions then obviously it will get bigger and there's a lot more objects on the screen so now what I can do is to now start it to tweak the numbers here so if I get set to 200 now you see the tree start to populate and it's very cool because this is something we actually wanted to do it and I'll do the same thing exactly the same process but uh, using the uh, in this instance rocks as well as grass so let me bring back those values back home and I'm going back to PCG Forest. So let me do the same what we've done already, but I'm gonna basically add more two more parameters. I set it to vector. I'll do the same for, for that one. And let me rename these to uh, rocks. And the last will be a. Uh, let me just do that uh, accordingly. Uh, so I'm gonna literally call this first a grass, and I'm gonna do a uh, rocks. Okay, and make sure always I set changes to higher value width because we want to avoid any crushing that can come with that. So, okay, that should be okay. And let me just look for grass. And right, rock. And I'm going to plug this to grass. And I'm going to also do this but for rocks. Okay, that's good. Um, uh, keep it as it is. Okay, so save that. And I'm gonna now basically do the same thing like we did, but I'm gonna duplicate this so we don't have to worry too much about creating a new one. Uh, and of course, I'm gonna make sure you duplicate those two. I call this a grass. And I'm gonna do the same thing by call the rocks. I'm gonna bring that here. I call it grass. And then I duplicate it one more time. And also I'm going to call it rocks. Bring it here. Uh, all of that. So all of them are reading at 300. And also don't forget to plug in graph instance to one of these uh, input components. Compile that. And I think we're good to go. So let's go back to our scene. And as you can see, now we can just start operating it. So in this case, I call it something 100. I make it smaller. All right, make it 10 maybe. All right, cool. So that is sorted. So I'm going to do the same thing for rocks. So let me try to bring those rocks in. Okay, cool. So now, as you can see, we made it like in a little interactive tool for creating environments. And it's really cool because it gives you that, you know, edge of advantage to not only tweak things on on runtime but at the same time you don't have to worry just keep going to the pcg volume and two tweaks inside the graph whereas you can actually create a blueprint for that and make it interactable uh, using construction script uh, with the details uh, panel and all the options that are given here you can actually do 
uh, all those changes on the runtime. So that's really nice. Um, so now I think what we're gonna do is to also, like promised before, uh, add the water. So let's try add the water inside. I'm gonna first enable it, restart it. Now with the water plug enabled, let's actually add one. So let's go and place plus bar here. Let's look for water body, and I think it's called body river. And it will automatically fill this in. Definitely remove this there. If you have something on the scene, just get rid of it. And so what we'll do now is just make sure you met, place it properly and use this to uh, test this out. It looks cool, but it, of course, it's not something we really wanted because we want to make sure anything that goes underneath the water gets removed, including the, any objects like trees here being placed around the water uh, needs to be removed, and especially inside the water. So what I'll do in this instance, I'm going to uh, and a target inside a PCG volume, a PCG graph inside, and to make sure that whenever water is activated on the surface here, that objects that are being overlapped will be removed. And we're gonna use like bonds modifier to decide how much of a distance at the spawning static meshes are going to be uh, uh, moved away from the water itself. So. This is going to be done within the PCG graph. So let's get started and actually bring the our PCG graph here. And now what we're going to do is go get actor uh, data. So because we are dealing with some actors that are being on the uh, on the surface on the scene, so we need to make sure we declare what exactly actor we're using for that one. You're gonna go and actor filter and change this to all world actors, which means you can set this to be working by Tago class. And since it's a class, we can just go and type in exactly what we have done with the waters, which is the water body river. Is it? And the whole point of doing this is to make sure that the this water body river that is being tagged for the class it interacts with all the objects that are literally placed within the graph, which are spawning. Uh, thanks to the surface sampler here as well. So in this case, what we're going to do is to actually make the difference of what we already have here with the water flowing through the surface sample here. So in this case, what I'm going to do is actually use the difference node, just like we did it before with uh, interacting any objects like rocks and trees, but this time we'll do it with the water. So for this one, I also want to add called bounce modifier. modifier what exactly is doing is uh, it's actually helping you to remove any obstacles by setting up like a distance uh, between x and y values as well as z uh, but in this case what i'm actually gonna do is to set to our difference here and our source definitely will be our trees so let's say i'm gonna put the trees right there so in this case so i'm actually gonna go from transfer points to source and i'm actually going to first remove this one and place it here and the reason why we do is because we want to actually feed in as a source and that source have been difference with the water of the river and and as outcome the static mesh will be spawned and uh, knowing that there's also water on the way so i'm gonna actually leave it as it is another thing i possibly do is also make sure your difference is set to and i think would be okay for now so let's go test this out and let's go actually test our bounce modifier. So you might be seeing on the on the graph here that there's a, still trees being spawned uh, across this river. So, but that's fine because that's why mod bounce modifier comes in very handy. So in this case, I'm gonna do is just put some values in, and let's try maybe head set up to like something bigger. So you start seeing the trees start to disappear, which is fine because that's what exactly we want, which is okay, obviously matter of tweaking the numbers here. So let me try and see if I set to like 100. So now you see my trees completely disappear. So if I put this lower values, maybe yeah, it's at 10. So after some testing, I found out actually, if I set my X bound min as well as max at 100, so that means within a 100 radius, and if I set these Y values at something like lower, and obviously the trees will start appearing more. So I'm gonna actually set a little bit close so let me just go back 
and now you can see that trees start to kind of disappear but they could way too close to still to the river so i'm gonna set something higher like 10. okay all right and the same goes let's try the same thing with the uh, but not for trees but for uh, grass and rocks so i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna do it separately but also i want to make sure it's actually separate uh, difference note as well so i'm gonna actually do this create another uh, difference note or actually i'm gonna copy it put it here set to our difference just like we did it let me do move this out the way slightly and another thing i'll do is in this instance i'm actually going to uh, use the grass which is here so i'm gonna actually let me move this slightly there okay there you go and I'm going to move this here and actually this is uh, the first one so I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna plug this into my source and I'm going to place it like that okay should be all perfect fine so now it is all set it up I can save it and let's test out what is going to happen to our trees oh well sorry grass so you might seeing the grass start to really to uh, being pushed away far away from the uh, river so let me start modifying the bounce modifier here let's go back to and set to like 50. can i increase that to 20. While I was working this, I also experimented that actually when you set up bounce minimum as well as bounce max to higher values in that Z axis, all anything that comes at Z position will disappear. So in this case, when I tweak the values from X and Y, but in this case, at Y situation, as you can see, the trees get too close to the river. So in the, they get over past the river, becoming invisible underneath the water. So what I'm gonna do, set to five here. I think it will be the best setting here. And I think that's actually works well for grass. Let's do the same thing this time, but for the rocks here as well. So, and you may also, as well, when you have some problems like uh, trees, you can also tweak these for the trees too. But now, for, for now, what I'm gonna do is do the same thing for rocks. I'm gonna go back to a graph and I'm going to copy what I have already. Oh, actually there is already for the rocks. I'm just gonna join it just like this. And let me check very quickly. Yeah, we can do a difference there. And I'm gonna, yeah, and I'm just gonna, yeah, it works now. Also, another thing we may encounter with, it might be some issues with the uh, um, uh, PCG volume not scaling up properly. And it, what it does is shearing and sizing instead of like, uh, when you scale up uh, propagating as well as distributing uh, grass as well as trees and so on just as an example to show you what, look, what i mean by this if you scale this up you can see the transform scale of this stay remains the same so the only way it does is resizes the meshes uh, of each uh, static mesh spawner uh, and it doesn't modify it accordingly so to fix this issue what you can actually do, do is we, with that BB Forest blueprint selected, you can scroll down all the way to the PCG component under Detail Spawner, and you can do is clean this up and regenerate again. That will fix the problem. So there you go. You got yourself a new tool that does a water body river, but at the same time, every time you move, your grass as well as rocks, including trees, all together are being removed when it overlaps with the uh, uh, water. The last chapter of tutorial, I will show you how to create a um, AI for animals, and I'll show you how to make them roam around it and do all the sort of things, including uh, not just roaming but also eating as well, etc. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.